The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, let's do first things first. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving week, but also there is you're getting a Thanksgiving Day present early, folks. Basil Chapman is going to go through one of his historical uh, webinars about what we can anticipate for 2018 based on things that have happened in the past. And, folks, uh, he is an incredible student of history. You would really enjoy that. Uh, I, I think you'll you'll like it very, very much. That's at 5 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to go to it, go to www.tfnn, and it'll be on the front page there, you know, for you to uh, to see it. Uh, I posted a chart for the uh, DAX up, and as you can see here, uh, we had a pretty big sell-off uh, this morning. Uh, that big spike at the bottom was when they were talking about the um, – referendum in uh, Germany. I don't know what it really means, but I'll, I'll go through that in just a minute because the real action was in the euro. That's where the where the real um, the real action occurred. Uh, one of the other ones that we want to look at, of course, is the uh, the FTSE. Uh, this is the uh, the London market, and it has uh, been unable to bounce. And you'll see that it is down quite a bit. We're almost at the 1.618 expansion on the um, that on the uh, FTSE. So we'll watch that. Now this is a light trading week, folks. It's basically a three and a half day or three day week. Uh, not much happens after Wednesday at noon. Nothing happens on Thursday and Friday's a a partial day, as I recall. So uh, I don't know if there still is a partial day or not. No, maybe not. Uh, no, I think it's the day after Christmas might be. Anyway, um, I'll double check that. Anyway, uh, that's what we'll, we'll keep an eye on that also for us. Let's just go here to the euro, what happened last night, folks, because that was the real interesting one uh, that occurred. Let's just get this here so we can take a look at it. You're going to have to follow me a little bit closely because this is a 15-minute chart. I'll just point it out to you. If you'll notice uh, on the opening here of uh, November the 19th, that was Sunday night, you notice the big drop from 117.95 down to 117.20. Uh, that was the referendum, uh, you know, that, that it, it had failed. You'll notice that it made a perfect ABCD there. It was setting right at a 61% retracement of the low we made back on November the 10th. Uh, you know, had everything there to tell you that it wanted to be uh, rallying, and look what happened. You went up and made a new high on the day. And then, of course, you sold off, and now you're trading back down now near that target that we were looking at is 117.60, which is the 61% retracement. Folks, I wanted to give you a story here because th this happened to me several times over my career where something would come out and you would be on the right side of the trade. This particular one goes back about 20 years, and uh, it, right after I'd moved here to uh, – Tucson, I was in a position in soybeans, and there was a very, very negative report, and I happened to be short, and the market opened down sharply. It was trading near limit down, and uh, I said, well, I think I'll cover some here at limit down just to book some profits, and uh, it kept t touching limit down, but I couldn't get filled, and then it started to rally. First, it was up $0.05, cents, and then $0.10, cents, and then $0.15, cents, and then $0.20. Cents. Then it was almost unchanged on the day, and I was so angry with myself that I just put a stop in above the place where I entered a few days ago, and that's where I uh, decided I just went to the movies, and that was that I went to see a movie called Volcano with uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan. I remember it, uh, you know, very, very uh, distinctly. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, to uh, remember that. But that's, that all this means is that you have people on both sides of the trade, and um, eventually – uh, the winners will be the one where the market takes direction. And you just don't know what that is. But the frustration that I had during that time was really, uh, really quite, uh, 
quite disturbing. Uh, I was fortunate enough last night to have dinner with uh, uh, Paula Douglas, Mark's wife. She happened to be here in Arizona doing some things from the estate and stuff, and we were reminiscing about our times here in Arizona. They moved here on August the 16th of 1996, and uh, I had spent every Thanksgiving with them uh, since that time up until two years ago. And uh, one of the second Thanksgiving that we ever had here in um, Tucson was, uh, I think, the 16th. Yeah, it was the first one. It was uh, 1996. Mark uh, called me um, uh, the day before, and he said, look, he says, we're going to do something special for Thanksgiving. He said, dress casually. And he said, I'll pick you up at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I says, well, we could eat at 7 o'clock in the morning. And uh, he said that uh, he wants to... Uh, uh, you know, do something special. So I said, okay. So we hop in the car and uh, we go down to the Gospel Mission on the south side of Tucson, which is a, which is the pretty rough end of Tucson. And uh, this Gospel Mission was run by uh, Spike Lee's brother, who had been a minister. And um, Mark says, we're going to cook turkeys and feed the homeless. And I said, oh, sounds good to me. And so we worked from about, oh, 730 in the morning till about 730 at night. We had a wonderful time. But folks, if you ever, 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 ever want to realize how lucky you are, go to one of those places and try to do some good. You can feed four people for 15 bucks for Thanksgiving. And uh, believe me, uh, it's a real, I mean, you really... It just it just tears your heart out to see some of these families that just basically, uh, you know, have nothing. So Mark and I did that uh, for quite a few years, and then when he moved to Scottsdale, there are no poor people in Scottsdale, so we, we didn't do that anymore. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We'll move on. That remember remember to try to listen to Basil's show today, folks. It's really worth every penny um, that 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 you can pay for it because he does a great historical view and and what's going to happen, and he does a great job every year. That's why they have it every year. So that's the one thing I would recommend you do. Okay, we've covered that. We've covered the euro. Let's take a look here at the stock market last night because when this referendum happened in uh, Germany, it pushed the stock market down. I'm going to put up another. This is just a five-minute chart showing you the patterns and the ratios from Friday. Uh, last Wednesday's low, you'll notice, was uh, down around at 25.55. The overnight low last night was an exact 61% retracement of that move at 25.68. We're trading around 25.79 right about now, which is uh, uh, the 61% from the high of November 17th, and it's 50% from the high of November 16th. That doesn't mean that it can't go up and make new highs. It certainly could. However, let's just take a quick look at something on a little bit, little bit different time scale in a different market. Here is the um, S and P over the past uh, 10 days. This is an hourly chart, and I just want to bring this up here to, to let you take a look at it. You'll see here's the S and P. Uh, hold it. Someone is saying Germany was not a it was a failure of Merkel's party forming a coalition government. Thanks, Mr. Z. I don't understand the the politics of it, but it was not a it wasn't a vote. It was not a referendum. It was just the fact that she couldn't form a coalition. And I don't know what a coalition means, but it sounds like something pretty important. Anyway, this is the cash S&P. As you can see, uh, on uh, Thursday, we rallied up to that 78% um, level when we had the uh, tax uh, thing form here in the United States. But the most important chart, the most important chart is the one that's going to come up next. That's the one. So stay tuned. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk 
free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted the chart of the 60 minute New York Stock Exchange Index, and I just wanted to show you uh, the huge divergence that we have going on. Uh, in the really large market, you know, this is uh, 2,200, the largest, most uh, liquid stocks, highly capitalized stocks in the world. Uh, it's where they use the indexes for the mutual funds and stuff. And uh, you can see the weakness in the market compared to the, uh, the, you know, the Dow, which is only 30 stocks, and the NASDAQ, you know, which is being influenced by the 20 stocks that are, you know, the, the FANG and Apple and all the others. But uh, this is basically showing you uh, that the market is under some pretty serious distribution is what it's looking at. This is what Stan Harley had pointed out to us uh, several weeks ago, and that has continued on. So that's pretty much. We had a, we had a new moon yesterday. And uh, so we're in this we're in this zone here where you know a lot of a lot of activity could be happening. We we might make a new high today. We're not very far away from it. Uh, if if we do, that would certainly be an unusual occurrence. Well, not unusual because it's made 54 new highs in the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, already this year. The thing that I think that I want to bring to your attention here is the fact that there is some really strong divergence here in the overall market versus what we see in the S&P, in the Dow, and the Nasdaq. You remember that's only about 300 stocks of the 8,000 that are out there, so it's uh, it's a big deal. Well, at least I think it's a big deal, which uh, we don't have to do too much about that. Um, I wanted to bring something to your attention here. We we just had a an alert uh, go off here that we just were down into this zone. We've been watching this pattern here uh, in the natural gas. We want to bring it up here to let you take a look at it. You'll see we didn't quite make the 382 last Thursday. Uh, we had the big move on Friday, and then today we've come down and we've made a new low into this gap area. We're at the old highs from October. Folks, this is a potentially bullish pattern, but it has to turn. If we get below that 302 level, uh, well, actually, three, $300 level, you're going to be looking at something. Well, it's not even 301. 
is all you'd have to risk here. But it has to hold this level because if it doesn't, that means that this is nothing more than a uh, an extension up at that 1.27, and we're most probably going to come down uh, another 10 cents. That is what we would be watching. So that's really what we're looking at. Oh, we've got a, uh, a caller from uh, Lost Wages. Oh, our good friend Larry is there. How are you, Larry? Hello, Larry. Good morning. Good morning to uh, you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, my friend. Oh, the same to you, Larry. Have a have a, a lot of turkey and pie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Love pumpkin pie for sure. What can I do oh, for you? Hey, um, I'm trying to. Well, how do you think a, a, a trader should uh, approach improving uh, his bottom line? Should he concentrate more on um, eliminating the losses, or should he think about more about? Uh, squeezing more profit out of his trades? Well, you know, there, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. There's two ways to handle that. You know, some people are really active traders, and they like to scalp. Uh -huh. And then there are, there are other traders that like to, you know, to you know, lot, lot, latch on to a move and let it ride. I, I can scalper. tell. Yeah. You're a scalper? Yeah. Okay. Then what I would do is I would, um, and this is, you know, I, I like scalping too, um, but but I like the other thing also. But if you're going to scalp, what you have to do is you have to limit yourself to about five trades a day, and okay. you have to pre you have to pre plan your trades and don't right. get away from that plan. In other words, if you're looking to trade crude oil and bonds and the S and P and the euro and um, say gold, don't go, you know, looking at natural gas or something else. Just stick with those, the ones you've done the work with, and don't overtrade because you can do re really well with scalping until you start overtrading and looking for smaller moves, like looking for a $150 move in the euro or something like that. Those are really uh, they 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 uh, drain so much of your energy mm -hmm. that it keeps you from uh, keeps you from doing. It. I, I will tell you this, Larry. The best traders that I know, uh, the guys that make, I mean, you know, that makes, you know, some people make pretty good money, but the guys that make the seven figures are the fellows that trade the really, really volatile things that are going on. In other words, uh, things that are moving really rapidly, like the euro today, what they're doing is they're selling as it's going down, and they, they'll add to the shorts. In other words, they'll they'll put on two, and then they'll put on another one, and then another one, and then another one. And they're then they, they use yeah, they're yeah, and and then and that's what they do. Now they're only going to be right about 30% of the time, but the 30% of the time that they're winning, they're winning big time money. I mean, it's uh, it's really amazing. There's two people that I know that Tom Hugard over in the UK does this extremely well, and there's another fellow over there. Uh, that does it the same way, but they have an intuitive feel for the market, and you know they use they use the ratios. They watch three eight two and six one eight, but um, they they are very aggressive when the market's really a volatile. They're they're trading and they're they're selling strength, and buying uh, no they're <laughs> they're selling weakness, and 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 um, buying strength yeah and buying strength and that's what they're doing. And now, but like I said, they're only right about thirty percent of the time. But the thirty yeah. percent of the time they write makes up. Many, many times, you know what they're wrong, that's, and they're only looking for two, two or three trades a day. Yeah, and that's really hard to do because oh, psychologically, you're having a low batting average, and I, that doesn't work for me. I, yeah. I got to have a higher batting average. It's just too damaging. Yeah, uh, I like I like the Pete Rose approach too. <laughs> yeah, Ty Cobb had had it. You know, he could hit home runs, but he didn't. He didn't try to do that. He ran the bases. You know, double, single, yeah. steal. Yeah, you know, get home that way, and that's that's yeah. what I like—a higher batting average. Well, you, you've answered your question, Larry. What you want to do is focus on the scalping techniques, and then don't yeah. do more than at the very most five trades a day. That would yeah, be the very most. That's about where I'm at. I mean, I can't. Sometimes I can just can't find setups, but about five to six is max. Sometimes that's I only correct. get two or three. But yeah. there's, and, there's, there's, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, the, not trading is a trade, you know, because you, yeah. you know, you're just having patience. So remember that. Just because you oh, don't yeah. have a trade on. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, there is one caveat, though. When your batting average gets, you know, starts to creep up and, you know, gets higher, uh, sometimes there's diminishing returns trying to increase that batting average because you're already up there, you know? Yes. If you're batting 350 and you're trying to bat 400, you don't mm -hmm. want to screw up the recipe. Right. Amen. Well, if you if you can do anywhere near six out of ten, and mm -hmm. out of those six you're going to have uh, you'll have two losses and two break evens. That's a oh. tremendous uh, and oh, your your risk. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, is that is that what you're doing? I'm doing about sixty uh, percent. That's spot on. 
Yeah, yeah. So now I, I just need to uh, make some improvements. I, I just want to eliminate some losses, or uh, maybe I need to go for uh, you know a little higher profit target. But anyway, I'm not un unhappy. I'm just trying to be happier. You know? Yeah. Well, that's well. Being happy is more important than trading anyway. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen a trillion dollar bet the the uh, uh, BBC uh, show on um, uh, long term capital? Uh, yes, I have. That's oh, okay. from a long time ago. Yeah, with John Merriweather. Yes, I was very yeah. aware of that. Yeah. Boy, we anybody have that thinks that they're so smart that they can beat the yeah. market needs to watch that. Uh, yeah, they had three Nobel Prize laureates yeah. in economics, and they still went tapioca. If it hadn't been yeah. for the, you know, Mr. Greenspan in the Federal Reserve, they would have been another Madoff thing. But uh, yeah. what the folks don't know what happened is they were so big they didn't have anybody taking the other side of the market. And that's what I think we have in some of these ETFs that are out there because we really don't know what's happening in some of these things. And it's, uh, it's a little bit scary, but that's just my two cents worth. Who knows? And these smart guys kept adding to losers. So, yeah. you know, anyway, thanks, Larry. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Hey, you bet, Larry. Thanks for st um, ch checking in with us, buddy, and happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Stay tuned, folks. At the break, I'm going to share the best Italian turkey recipe you'll ever get. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm going to share an Italian recipe for turkey that I think you'll like. Uh, I know most of you folks don't like turkey because it's so dry, but you can bypass that 
if you follow this recipe. You get your turkey ready, just like you're ready to cook it, and then you make about 12 slits all across the breast and the legs and the thighs. And on each of those slits, you put in a clove of garlic, a little tiny clove of garlic, and stuff it with butter. And you put that on each one of those. And then you cook the turkey the regular way. And when the turkey is finally done, about four hours later, you slice the turkey, cut it up just the way you like it, and you put it into a baking pan. And then you strain all the juices from the turkey's uh, dressings. Uh, you Just a little cheesecloth or something, and make that look like it'll be look like chicken broth, a little thicker probably. And then you lay that across the um, top of the baking pan, and you bake that for about 30 minutes right before you eat. Boys and girls, you'll never have a dry piece of turkey, and it'll taste delicious because of the flavor of the garlic that's in there. So that's it. Send all referrals to the uh, – never mind. We won't do that. Okay, let's move on here to the grain market system. Well, the crude oil. we got to cover crude oil for our folks here at TFN, and they've asked a question here about this. you notice here on the crude oil, the um, – Main thing that you're looking at here is we have that those that big pattern up there, that uh, 1.618 expansion. We had that big move up yesterday. And the one thing I pointed out in the newsletter this week, both gold and crude oil were at really critical levels. And it was important for crude oil to really, uh, you know, get above that level very, very quickly. And I'll, I'll show you the secondary reason for this in just a moment. And last night, all we did is we went up and made a new high from Friday by, by 12 cents, I believe at 56.80, uh, and then we backed off about 80 cents. And all we've done, folks, and this is important, all we've done in this back off, this 80 cents, is to come down to 382 of the whole move. So this is still bullish in crude oil. There's nothing wrong with the sell-off like we've just had. So watch it very, very closely. That's the, the real key, because we're at key levels. These things could take off. Now, if we look at the heat, uh, heating oil, you're gonna see the heating oil did exactly the same thing, where it took out last week's high, and didn't go anywhere. So, you know, the question I have is, why wasn't there some buying, you know, at that point? So that's what I'm looking at in the crude oil, because uh, if we can't pop through there, this is going to be a pretty significant top. Remember, this is a slow week uh, for trading on all, on just about it. Well, everything. And uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even know if we're going to be open here. I think we'll be open here on Friday at TFNN. I'm not sure. Sometimes they take the the, uh, the uh, four-day weekend. I'm going to take a four-day weekend for sure. I'm going to be off. Uh, I am, well, I, I might, yeah, I'll probably be able to do the show on Friday, but I'm certainly not going to be, uh, yeah, the, thanks, Steve. Steve Rhodes just told us that the New York Stock Exchange Index closes, um, you know, th three hours early at one o'clock on Friday, and believe me, there's not going to be enough people down there to, well, they fill the orders electronically now, but that's it. Hey, guess what, boys and girls? TFNN will be closed on Friday, so you're going to get a four-day holiday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll come in rocking and rolling here, you know, on um Monday the 27th, and we'll uh, we'll see uh, how things uh, uh, shape up at that time. So we'll be watching it uh, closely as always. Now something else happened last week uh, in the market that I think is uh, is relatively important, and that is that the the Dow Jones Transportations. Uh, we'll put this chart up so you can take a look at it. By the way, if you have any uh, questions that you want to ask, it's 877-927-6648. Uh, You'll notice that we made a perfect 61% retracement there on Wednesday. We had a really strong rally on Thursday, and we gave it all back on Friday. Uh, if we get below that uh, 9,400 level in the Dow Jones transportations, that is not going to be a positive sign in the transport. But uh, that's just the transports, and we actually don't trade that. We watch that as an index you know, to uh, to keep a, uh, just to see what's going on. The other one that's interesting from a technical perspective is the VIX index. Uh, we've had some pretty good volatility here now since uh, November, uh, October the 23rd. We're getting 20% moves pretty common in the VIX. And you'll notice that we had this movie, <laughs> we had this move up to the first objective at 14 and change. And then over the next three days, we came right down uh, to the 61% retracement, given the fact that we're going to be up a little bit today, it might make the 78% level. But again, we're in this you know, time where the, the trading is, is really thin. It doesn't take much to move some of these markets uh, on, these, uh, on this thin trading week that we have. Historically, folks, this is the most positive week 
uh, of the year for stocks, the week of Thanksgiving week. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving, both of those days have a better than 70% chance of the market closing higher. In other words, Wednesday would close higher than Tuesday and um, Friday would close higher than Wednesday. So uh, keep that in mind if you're, if you're scalping or day trading. But those are just statistics. They don't always, they don't always work, as you can understand. I'm going, uh, I don't think I'm going to, well, since I've only got two more days this week, I won't have any guests on, but I'm going to have Michael Jenkins from Stock Market Cycles um, uh, on hopefully next week. Uh, Michael's been around uh, for a very, very long time out of New York City. And uh, we'll hope to have him on. And then the following week, we're also going to have Stan Harley. And finally, we'll get Bill Meridian on uh, around that same time. So the week of the 27th, we hope to have three uh, important guests to give their ideas of what they're looking for uh, for 2018. That's the main thing that uh, we're going to be uh, looking at. So uh, we're starting the market out uh, uh, strong this morning. Uh, we you know, bouncing around a little bit, but it's still starting strong. Uh, the Dow's up about 20 or so. The S&P's up about six. So it's not a lot of strength, but somewhat, you know, main thing. Keep an eye. I think the thing that the, that we just chatted about was the uh, this crude oil at this uh, $56 uh, a barrel level. That is a 382 retracement, and uh, below that would be another 40 cents at the 5560. If we get below 5520, folks, this is going to look pretty ominous for the crude oil. That's the way I would uh, I would have to view that. So. Uh, watch that, uh, you know, pretty pretty cautiously. Oh, uh, the question we have about wheat. Just one second, uh, Bob, and I'll bring up the wheat. I can do that without too much trouble. I want to do it two ways because I want to do it with, I'll do it with Minneapolis wheat first. We'll get it up here so that you can see it. And uh, this is Minneapolis wheat. You notice we held that support uh, for well over two months down there at that 612 level. We had a pretty good move down. And it looks to me like we've got an ABCD structure up about another 40 cents uh, in Minneapolis wheat. However, the Christmas wheat gives pretty much the same, the same pattern, Bob. If you'll take a look at this, you'll see that uh, we had a lot of support down there at that 419 level. And we're trading around 423 now, I believe. And that tells us that we could get up about 12 to 13 cents higher that would be a larger ABCD pattern also that would come in around the 438 level. So that's what we're looking at in the wheat market. And uh, these grains are going to have some really interesting moves at the beginning of the year because some of these uh, rules that, uh, that have been taken away from the Obama administration uh, by the former, by the current president has helped move some of these things into a more competitive environment, I understand. So that'll be something that looks... Uh, looks really interesting. Another market that looks uh, very interesting it from a long, oh, oh, we gotta go. I'll put up sugar, 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. As Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. I want to remind you again about uh, Basil Chapman's 90-minute program tonight. Uh, from 5 to 6.30 Eastern time, he's going to go over a whole lot of things, uh, inflation, deflation, to look at the dollar and how it relates to gold, autos, and real estate. And, of course, he's really good with real estate, uh, looking at his social economic trends that he has. And uh, he's got, you know, of course, he's, he's a master technician, so... Uh, and he's also going to bring out the stocks that could, you know, benefit and the ones that could be hurt the most during this time. So go to www.tfnn. All you have to do is uh, click on that link that says what we can anticipate for 2018. It'll give you a pretty good idea. He, I'll be there. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, he does great work. That's uh, all I can tell you. Let's move on to the next one that we want to talk about. Uh, and that we talked about the crude oil. We talked about the heating oil. Let's switch over here to the Japanese yen. I wanted to show you something very unusual that happened today uh, in the Japanese yen. While we were going um, uh, on the break here, or, excuse me, as we went into the weekend, we had just made that 382 retracement at 111.90. And last Sunday night, or last night, uh, last night it was, uh, when the euro was going, uh, you know, bonkers up and down, we made a lower low in that Japanese yen by one pip. Now, folks, that that is not a that's really hard to do to make a low in the in the Japanese yen versus U.S. dollar by one pip. That that tells you that there must have been a very very large order uh, setting in there. Right now, we've only moved about 25 pips in that direction, but the fact that it couldn't go any lower tells you, the, at least from the short-term standpoint of looking at this right now, it tells us that we've really had a, a lot of support here at this 111.90 uh, in the Japanese yen. We're trading around 112.25 uh, right now. Uh, but, you know, if we turn up from here and get really strong, this will be an incredibly bullish uh, pattern on a longer-term basis. But that's really the thing that uh, we want to be watching here uh, uh, very, very closely. That's, you know, that's what I'm watching here in this Japanese yen. The euro on a longer term time frame, I still believe, uh, well, you can see here, we almost made it last night. This is what I, which is what I put into the newsletter. Uh, last night, I thought we would get down uh, to the 117.10 level. We got down to 117.20, and then we rallied all the way back to 118, and now we're trading at 117.60. So this is still in a in a consolidation move. It looks like we're heading down to 117 
uh, in the euro. So those these currencies are uh, very interesting. Now, one thing you have to remember st uh, statistically, right after the first of the year, and I don't know why this is, there's some really strong seasonal tendencies for the currencies to uh, change direction around the first of the year. Uh, we'll go into that at another time, but it's something that John Jameson uh, that I'm working closely with now over at the UK is doing some studies about it, and it looks really interesting. The other thing that John is doing uh, that looks really interesting is we've we've taken the six major cross rates and we've um, put them into a uh, I think it's a spreadsheet, and it shows when is the best time to trade re related to the opening price, and each one of them. Uh, unusually is a little bit different. In other words, the euro uh, might be at 90 minutes and the Australian dollar might be at two hours. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really amazing. There's one other big thing that's happening in the world, folks, that we don't understand too much over here because we don't hear it too much. But in the UK, uh, well, all of the European Union, they now are drafting a amendment to the uh, ECB that they're not going to have 100,000 euro deposit insurance. Uh, <laughs> that would be enough to scare uh, me. Well, even the insurance is enough to scare me. But uh, if that goes through, there's something rotten in Denmark and Sweden and uh, Ireland, Scotland, everywhere. But uh, when they start changing the rules in the middle of the game, boys and girls, that's not a good thing. That's for sure. Remember that. So we'll be watching it. Okay, let's move on to the next one here that I wanted to cover. And that is utilities because it, it relates to the, um, the interest rates quite a bit. And we still think we're going to go higher in interest rates, not lower. But I'll cover that next. Uh, you'll notice here that we've completed that three drive pattern in the Dow Jones utilities on the daily basis. It went right up to the exact 1.618. We've come off sharply for three days. So that tells us that that top is in. We've already seen the Dow Jones transportation and that one already looks uh, looks uh, really interesting too. Now the one that is really a little tiny bit puzzling here, and that is the we'll look at this first one here will be the um, Treasury bonds. Let's just bring this up here and look at it. As you most know, that I am very bearish Treasury bonds, but there is a possibility, uh, and I have to bring this to your attention because if the stocks happen to weaken, you know. God forbid there would be a sell-off of 5%. This could mean a flight to quality in the bonds, and we could get as high as this 156 and even higher. And the reason why I say a possibility of even higher goes back to the low that we made on October the 23rd. That was a spot-on 61% retracement of the low from March. And if that is the case, that could be a large A, B, C, D pattern that would take this up we went from 46, uh, we had 13 handles. So if you had 13 handles to 50, that would take us up to 163. That means we would move nine handles higher in the Treasury bonds and still be very bearish because it would still be a long-term bear market because we topped a year and a half ago. So we have to pay attention to that because, you know, we haven't seen a flight to quality if there is such a thing anymore. But um, that that is a possibility of doing it. I bring that to your attention because, after we hit that 154 level, we broke two handles down to the 61% retracement. And by the time you blinked your eyes two days later, you were back at that same level of 154. We hit that again last night. We backed off a little bit today. But there's still that possibility out there. So um, any move below 150, then, then we're looking at something you know far more uh, detrimental to the downside. Rates longer term, I really believe, are going to go higher, not lower. Uh, that's because that long-term pattern is done. If we look at the Treasury notes, you'll see pretty much the same thing, only it's not nearly as strong as the bonds. And the bonds are, you know, the, the, they trade about one-sixth the volume that the Treasury notes do, but the volatility in the bonds is about three times what it is in the notes. And you can see here, we could make an easy ABCD in the notes at the 382, uh, which is up about uh, one and a half handles, which is equivalent to three handles in the bonds. And that would be nothing more, you know, than a 382 retracement. Remember, the high we made on September at you know, 128 was a 382 on the weekly basis, going back uh, 18 months. So this is a this is a bearish pattern longer term. Uh, shorter term, you know, we'll have to wait and see, you know, what's going to handle with it. But you know, we're having um, 
Uh, well, the market's really up a little bit. It really hasn't done very much so far uh, this morning. Uh, we're doing much to the euro. Uh, the yen now is at uh, 112.30. It's moved up a little bit. And the bonds are pretty much at 153, 27, 28, 30. So they're not doing much either. Uh, the crude oil is still hovering right at that 382 level at 156. Um, we got to be careful because if we get below there, you know, this is not going to look very good in the crude oil because we made a higher high than Friday last night on Sunday and we didn't go anywhere. I mean, a higher high by two pips. I mean, that, that is absolutely nothing. Now, the gold market. Uh, the gold market to me has had a chance, you know, to really come out of here with a lot of gusto. Uh, you know, we, we went down to that 1274. We rallied $25 straight up to. Uh, uh, 1299. We're now trading about uh, uh, 12 bucks under that, 1287. And the number you want to be watching on this gold is to make sure if it's bullish, and we're trading right at the 382 right now. Uh, so if we get below 1282, we'll cover that at the break. 877 927 6648. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Basil Chapman has just announced a special subscriber event taking place Monday, November 20th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. What can you anticipate for 2018? In this 90-minute webinar for subscribers to Basil's daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, he will be discussing a variety of topics for the coming year, including can high techs continue to lead? Will the financials be affected by yields? And where will yields be in 2018? The chances for inflation or deflation? What stocks could be affected or weakened in the coming year? As well as Basil's long-term outlook for the dollar and gold, as well as many other topics. For all the details and to sign up for a 30-day free trial to the opening call, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. With nothing to risk, this is a great time to try out Basil's daily trading newsletter. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're talking a little bit about the gold. We're now at a 382 retracement of this move we had from 1274. If we get below the uh, 1282 um, level, I would think that possibly, you know, this bullish scenario might be um, slowed down a little bit. Part of the problem that we have with this is the fact that the doggone silver just does not look very good. Here's where it was Sunday night, and as you can see, we gave it all back 
uh, already today we're trading below 117 so that's not a good sign uh, either so uh, just keep that uh, as you're watching um, the oh I got uh, the T notes well let's put up the Treasury uh, where's the silver we should be able to get that silver chart up I posted it maybe not I did yeah Shut the front door. Maybe I got the wrong one. Anyway, you can see it's with pulled back into that zone. The best trade of the week, the best trade of the whole uh, rest of the month is to listen to Basil's show tonight. The best 90 minutes you're going to spend and, uh, you know, less than the cost of a, you know, expensive cup of coffee. Uh, you'll get a lot of great information and some great ideas. So I hope to get to see you there. Uh, one of the other things that we want to watch very, very closely today is this Euro. How can the silver chart be up? I, that, that's the chart. Yes, the silver chart. <laughs> Sorry, folks. The silver chart is up because I wanted to show that that breakout was a false breakout in the silver. And that's why we're getting a little bit of the weakness that we're seeing here in gold. Not much. And we're down, you know, what, uh, 12 bucks from the high. But anything more than 12 bucks is not good for the gold market because it doesn't do more than 11 at the most if it's really, really bullish. So. This is the key. And silver is much, much thinner than the gold. Remember, it's about one-sixth the, the volatility. So pay attention uh, to that as we, as we look at some of these things. I think the important thing is to look at the fact that that New York Stock Exchange Index was telling us that the market it looks a lot weaker technically when you look at that index and if you look at the other indices that are only about three or four hundred stocks at most so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may god bless Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Tom O'Brien's weekly goal.